Back to a graphic that we had in the stormwater program, which illustrates what's happened as we built our cities. This goes to what is the use of having a rain barrel. One of the, of the purposes and benefits of having a rain barrel is that it diverts water from the downspout, makes it available for use, and especially if you've got a downspout that's going to a driveway or a street, then that takes that amount of water off of the storm sewer system and helps reverse this problem that we've illustrated. Rain barrels help to catch rainwater, reduce the amount of stormwater that enters streams, and it provides a source of water for landscape plants. Here are the owner obligations to participate in the grant program. Attend a workshop on stormwater and rain barrels, and you're doing that today. Report the date and amount of time needed to install the rain barrel. Maintain the rain barrel for five years from the date of installation. Because we're getting in the winter period, we don't want installations that are going to become compromised because they freeze. Uh, allow access by MNA or LFUCG to look at the installation to see that it has been installed. And then return the barrel to the Metathorpe Neighborhood Association if it's taken out of service before the end of the five year period. Then we'll reassign barrels returned to us if people are interested. The 20% cost is not refundable after the barrel's installed. Okay, installation considerations. Location, normally it's gonna be near a downspout. Normally it's gonna be in a place where you've already got rainwater coming off and going down around the house, so that's good. The base where you install that needs to be level, not topsy-turvy, and we have provided a, a two-foot square pad for you to help get that level, solid, firm surface for your installation to start out with. Then it's how high do you want the barrel? And the consideration on, on how high has to do with access for your watering can. You want to be able to get water in that, depending on where you put your uh, upper, your little valve. You can put the valve on the bottom if you want to, or you can put a soaker hose on the bottom. And we suggest that the package that you see, which is one block height, that gets you eight inches and two pads. The two pads are two inches each. So that's eight plus four. What's that, 12 inches? That's a foot. If you want to go higher, you can get another set of blocks and get you up another eight inches. Connection to the gutter system. Now, that nice installation you see with the rain station only comes with that particular barrel. You can't get it with any of the other ones. So we've provided two other ways uh, with diverters that you can connect to your downspout. The overflow needs to be away from the foundation of your house, especially you can, with some of these diverters, you can locate the barrel in a different place than your downspout and run a tube over to it. Be mindful of where the overflow from that barrel is going to occur. Keep debris out of the system, especially with the rain station, because if that plugs up, water will back up. And if you don't take it out of service in the wintertime, water backs up, it freezes, it can burst your leader. You don't want to let that plug, you don't water, want water to back up and freeze. Add weight. We've had, already had an experience with a rain station where it was installed and it didn't rain. The next morning, the owner found it in the corner of the yard. Wind blew it away. So we suggest that you may put a half block in there to help weight that if you want to. And the last consideration on installation is mosquitoes. <clears throat> you want tight fittings to keep the little critters from getting in and uh, propagating. Operation of the rain barrel. Use water often. I mean, we, part of the benefit of using or having a rain barrel and, and getting water off of the storm sewer system is that in order for it to work, you have to use the water to pre provide volume for the next rainstorm. Now, 
How often? <clears throat> well, some advice comes once a week to keep the water from becoming stagnant. Uh, we've got a lily and with the flow through, it's not a problem. We've had the water in there up to a month and, and it's been perfectly fine. If you've got a lot of leaves and debris in your gutters and organic matter that goes in that water, it can present a problem. So you wanna keep that into consideration as to how, much, how often you use the water and, and drain it out. Does water flow through the barrel like the lily? If it does, it's less of a concern. If it doesn't, then you may have to use the water more often to keep it from being stagnant. But with the lids and everything, I don't know that that's a real problem. It's gonna come with experience. If there is possibility of bird droppings, possibility of asphalt contamination, uh, then water the ground, not the actual plants, and wash the vegetables if you're gonna use the water to water your vegetables with. Uh, agitation, and it depends on what kind of installation you have as to whether you can agitate it to periodically stir the solids up. Well, our recommendation on an annual basis is that you take it out of service and take all the solids out at that time. So I don't know that agitation is that big an issue during the year uh, uh, as long as you don't have a lot of solids. Empty the barrel once a month, and that gets a, a volume that will be replaced by the next rain. Rainwater is mildly acidic. I did an experiment at Camp McKee with a rain barrel and measured the pH of the water in that barrel. It came out 5.5. That's acidic. It's kind of like on the vinegar side of the house, probably not as strong as vinegar. But if you have plants that are sen sensitive and would be uh, not tolerant of acidic water, you might take that into consideration when you're using the water. And mosquitoes, consider a mosquito dunk. This is not something we provide as part of the grant. They look, they look like this. You get them at the hardware store and it contains a uh, bacterium that kills the mosquito larvae. It does not take a full circle of this product to treat a rain barrel. It takes about a fourth of a piece of a circle to treat a rain barrel. If you do a Google search on that particular strain of bacteria, you'll find an EPA registration pesticide page that talks about it. Shelby, Shelby, I make a comment here. Um, it takes very little rain to fill up your rain barrel. I mean, really surprisingly little. Um, and so if you just, I mean, if you attach it to a soaker hose and use it up frequently, if you get rain, it refills pretty quickly. So uh, it takes about four days, I think, for the life cycle for mosquitoes to lay an egg and have it hatch. And so if you drain your barrel pretty frequently, you're not going to have a mosquito, have a mosquito problem. problem. It's what do you do with the residue in the barrel when you yeah. clean it out? You, same thing you do with your gutter debris okay. when you clean out your gutters. Okay, winter time. You want to take your rain barrel out of service, either in place, deactivate it, or disconnect it and store it away, one of those two. The diverters that we provide allow you to leave it in place and either switch it off. The rain station has a cover that goes on the downspout to take it so the water no longer goes in the barrel. You want the barrel to be empty of water so you don't get a freezing problem. We've had at least, I've had several folks tell me that, I didn't know, and it broke. So you don't want to subject your rain barrel to freezing conditions. Uh, clean out the accumulated se sediment. The best is to store it inside, and if you leave it outside, consider the wind problem so it doesn't blow into your neighbor's yard.